Now let's cover the second way that you can bring in transactions, business transactions that were paid for with your personal account at the probably at the beginning of the year. So let me review our scenario that I've created here. We have a business that started in 2017. We got QuickBooks and established separate business accounts that we now run all of our business transactions through separate business checking and separate business credit card. That happened as of February 1st. Prior to February 1st, during the month of January, all of our business expenses were paid for from our personal accounts and all of our business revenue was deposited into our personal accounts. So when we selected our start date for QuickBooks at the beginning of this course, we selected February 1st because that's when all of our separate business financial accounts were established. And I know that's different from the example I used at the beginning. This is a, a new scenario that I have concocted here. But what we would really like is to be able to bring in our business expenses and business revenue from January that was paid for out of personal so that at the end of the year, when we run our reports, all of our business activity will be captured in the QuickBooks report, we won't have to use QuickBooks for February through December and then add in this extra data manually in order to get complete figures for our taxes. So that's what we're trying to accomplish here. In the other video, I showed how you could accomplish that through a journal entry. In this video, we're gonna show it in a little different way. I think this way is slightly more complicated, but it's for the people who like to see the fact that they paid for these business items out of personal, and they like to view it as that their business owes them this money back. So if you would like to, to see this transaction, these transactions reflected as money that the business needs to pay you back for, then this is the option for you. So we're gonna start by going to accounting, the chart of account, and we're gonna create a new account. We're gonna treat this amount that's payable back to us as a credit card. And I know that's weird, but it's the way we have to do it in order for us to be able to bring in transactions um, all together. And this is especially helpful if you have a lot of transactions. With this small number, it wouldn't be that helpful to do things this way. But if you had quite a few transactions, this, this could be very helpful. So we're treating ourselves like a credit card, like a payable, a liability. So I'm going to call this payable to yourself. The credit card of you. You can call this whatever you want payable to Sarah, payable to Jim, payable to whoever. So we're going to save and close that. What this is going to do, if we come back to our dashboard, see we've created like a new bank account on here. Now we can bring in transactions. Now the reason why we can't bring transactions into our business checking account is because these transactions did not run through our new business checking account. If we brought them into our business checking account, it would nothing would reconcile because these transactions did not occur there. That's not the screen I wanted. We're gonna go to banking. Oh, everything's all compressed. I'm, I'm going to expand this window so I can um, function the way I need to. But I just wanted you to remember that this is the data we were working with. Um, but I don't have to see it to show you the rest. And our payable to ourselves. I don't see it here. Maybe that's because it doesn't have activity yet. So what we'll do is come here. We're going to go to, um, so once again, we're on the banking uh, tab. We're going to do a file upload. 
We're going to browse for our file. And it is this, our example. We're going to click Next. Now we select which account we want it to go into. And we're going to select the account we created, Payable to Yourself. See, I, I wanted to point out we had to create like a, a liability to us or some sort of account that QuickBooks would allow us to import transactions to because we couldn't have just created any random type of account. They wouldn't have showed up here. But liabilities do, and that's what we're trying to indicate that these are items that we need to pay ourselves back for. Okay, so in my example, my first row was not a header row. So make sure you double check that. I've messed this up plenty of times just from that little button. Um, the first column we had was the date. And this was the format. Here, maybe I should show this to you really quick. So we had the date. Then we had the description. We had our negatives in column C and our positives in column D. I can, okay, so here's description. So that's like the vendor. Oh, let me click this. Uh, you have to indicate whether you have one column with both positive and negative numbers or if you have two columns with separate positive and negative numbers. Two columns is easier to do in my mind. Um, but if you have one column, select that. Uh, let's see, so back to where we were. So the money spent then, now that changed is in our negative column three. A money received was in our column four. So make sure you select this first and then it'll give you the option to do the money spent, money received. And this is much easier to do two column. Click next. And these are the list of our transactions. Um, everything looks good. Do we want to import? Yes. Okay, next step, we need to accept our transactions. There we go. Now we've got payable to ourselves here. We have all of our transaction, transactions here like we always had before. So we can just add these transactions in. Um, and we're good. I'm going to go ahead just um, to show you how this works. I'm not going to change my account. So right now, our balance of payable to ourselves is zero. I'm going to just add into whatever accounts they say to add because this is a sample company. I don't care what gets messed up. There's nothing to mess up. Okay, so now you'll see that our amount payable to ourself is 7402. There's no bank balance to pull in because it isn't really a bank. So we owe ourselves 7402. So then what I would recommend to make it easy, um, as you begin to make payments to yourself, um, let's see, I need, I need an expense to show you. We don't have a checking account linked on this example company. So I um, normally you would have a checking account. And like we talked before in the owner's equity section, you can make payments to yourself. So what I would recommend is when you are able, make a check payable to yourself or make a withdraw from your business checking to your personal checking in this amount. Actually, I'll add it as a check, and that'll be easier to show you. If you don't want to add it as a check, you can just, as it occurs down here, let me find the payable. Like if you paid yourself $54, $53.34, here, I'll do it in two lumps to show you. It's kind of weird to have to create all these weird scenarios. Okay, payable to yourself. So let's pretend this was a transfer you made from business checking to personal to pay yourself back. So we're gonna go ahead 
the account we select is that because we're paying it back to ourselves. Okay? So now, if we come here, we're going to have to, I think we're going to have to add that. Hopefully it's just a refreshing is issue because it should have... There we go. So now it has changed the balance. So now let's say you wanted to write yourself a check. And what I would recommend when you finally finish paying yourself back, do it in the exact amount. If you don't, you're going to end up having a little bit of weirdness sitting on your books on your balance sheet for a long time. So write yourself a check. This is another way you can pay yourself back if it's not a transfer. The payee is going to be, well, whatever. You can pick the payee. Um, I guess we're paying it out of our PayPal account. <laughs> and what we're going to hit is that payable to yourself. So it's like we're paying our credit card. I think it was 2040. I really should have checked. Um, choose the payee. It's probably going to make me do that. Um, we're going to say shell one. I don't know. We're making this stuff up. Okay, let's go ahead and write that check to ourselves to clear out that balance. Oh, I selected the wrong amount. If I had selected the right amount, you can see how it would zero out. So pay yourself back to the exact amount, and when you pay yourself back, hit this payable to yourself account. And then once you've finished paying yourself back, it'll be back to zero and you'll be all set. I know this is a much more complicated way to do it, but if you feel like you need to do it this way, now hopefully you have the tools to do it. Okay.